What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Sign. So I saw a video of, I think it was a Heineken ad, where they were pouring water down the tube to get this kind of like circular motion in the water. So I was wondering if we could get a similar effect using X particles. So yeah, let's get into it. But before this uh, video starts, I just want to say thanks for all the support recently on Patreon and on YouTube. We're past 5,000 subscribers, that's really awesome. So I just want to say thanks for all the support guys. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, uh, my Patreon is in the description. There's a bunch of tutorials and project files on there. And yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, that'll be up on the page now. Yeah, let's get straight into it. Cool, so let's start off over here with a plane. We're going to make this 800 by 400. Let's make it about 100 in the width and 20 in the height. So we're looking at something like that. That should be good. Cool. Let's throw a bend modifier onto our plane over here. Put it to plus X and say fit to parents. Cool, that's perfect. And now let's make it negative one, three, two, three. So I'm just gonna give you guys the exact um, measurements and uh, settings that I use, just because it did take me quite a while to figure out the, the correct settings to make it actually look good. So yeah, let's bridge a stone. So I think you can kind of see what we're going for, where the water's gonna come down and spin around there. Something like that should be perfect. Cool, now let's rotate this to about 37 degrees over here. And that is perfect. So we don't wanna do it to real world scale, uh, just with the amount of particles that we're gonna be using. So let's increase this by quite a bit. So three in the scale over here. And we should have something like that. And that is perfect. Cool, let's grab a, another plane. Let's just rotate it up. Uh, we're just going to put two planes on either side, just as colliders, for, so the water does not go past it. Something like that should be good. Oh, we can just call those colliders, and we can hide these for now. Let's just add a collider tag onto each of these. These two can stay the same, but then over here, let's turn down our bounce a bit and increase the scattering just by a tad. And that should be perfect for now. Cool, now let's add a XP system. Let's go our, our emitter over here. And I think I had something like 615, to, uh, about 50 in the height. Let's bring this back maybe to around here and then face that downwards. Awesome, so now when we press play, should have particles shooting forward. Awesome. Let's go over here into our modifiers and add a gravity modifier. Gravity and in our emitter over here, let's change it from speed, the speed to zero and the radius to two. You can also increase the birth rate just by a bit just to see what we're doing. And then over here, you don't have to do this, uh, but I just changed it to fluid density just so we could kind of see what it looks like when it pours. And so let's see what that looks like. And that is perfect. You'll see the particles come down and they do a little swirl over there. That's exactly what we're looking for. But at the moment, they're not moving like water. It's just kind of falling down with gravity and moving out. And they're not really colliding with each other. They're all just there. So to have them actually collide with each other and act like water, we're gonna throw this XP fluid FX. I did try doing this effect with the clip fluid and the fluid PVD, but I found that I got the best results using just the XP fluid FX. It was also the quickest one to simulate and run, so that's kind of why I went with it. Awesome, so you can change the, the accuracy, but for the look that I was going for, especially because I wanted this kind of speed ramping, slow motion effect, I found that just having it on a fast did a pretty good job. Cool, so I think the settings I had up here, the initial pressure at 100, the damping was I think at 20. Let me just check. I think it was about 25, and then the density over here, I had at 133. Cool. So let's see what that looks like now. Let's play. Nice, now we get a more of a 
water look to the particles. Cool, so uh, you'll notice that it's not really going fully around. Uh, the way we can fix this, instead of increasing the speed or anything like that, all we need to do is actually just increase the height over here, because the higher it is, the more I don't know, initial velocity there will be as it's coming down. Maybe not initial velocity, but the speed at the end will be a little bit more, a little faster. And now you'll see we're getting more of a round look, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Cool. So let's increase this bit. Uh, I think for my render, I had it at about 100,000 particles. Let's just see what that looks like. Maxin is forming a nice curve over there and feels quite natural in the way that the water looks. Yeah, I think this is working really nicely. I think it looks really nice over here. Let's just give it a little bit longer just to see how it looks. Awesome. So I think that's kind of perfect for now. This nice curving over here. So obviously you can mess around with this a little bit more by just changing up the height over here, uh, depending on the look that you're going for. But I think for what we're doing now, this is perfect. Uh, let's just make sure that all of these are set to any. Uh, it's not doing it now, but I did have some times with my render there where there were little particles that were falling off and that was just an easy fix just to changing the colliders to the normals to be any. And that kind of stopped that. Awesome, so how are we gonna get this into geometry? That's pretty easy. We're going to go over here and add in a open BDB mesher. Let's throw our emitter into it. And look, we have blotches. Um, looks very realistic. <laughs> so that is not the look which we want. Let's change our voxel size to about 3. Let's change our point radius to 2. I'm going to change it to 2 because of the fact that our radius over here is set to 2. You'll see if we change this to 1, there won't be anything up here. So 2 should be fine. Uh, you can obviously increase the detail over here by increasing the voxel size, but for now, I don't think we really need to. I think three should be fine. Um, so I would recommend uh, before adding the open BDB measure is once you're happy with the way that the simulation looks of the particles, I'd go into the emitter over here and cache it. And don't cache it with the open BDB measure though, because it'll make it take 10 times as long. Once this is cached, then throw the cache file, um, cached emitter into the open medium measure. Um, so this looks kind of like water, but not really. It's very blotchy. It doesn't have a realistic look to it, but we can change that by going over here and going into our filters. So I think it usually starts out with a median. I could be wrong. Um, if it doesn't, we just go over here. Nope. Go over here and select median. Uh, I think I just deleted it by mistake. Three, two, and okay, we got a median over here. Let's bring that down to around there. Throw in our meter again. So you'll notice with the median, it kind of like smooths stuff out. We had to have, had it, have it at 100. Looks a lot smoother. But we don't want it that smooth. Something like that should be good. And then let's add a offset over here. And I think I left the offset at just a 100% and all the settings the same. Because it gives us this really nice water look over here. So even with these little bits over here, it's okay. The, the way that I had it was I had our camera. It had a kind of tight lens. Something like that. And so you don't really notice these bits over here. And with a water texture, it gives a really nice realistic look to it. Yeah, so that's the main gist of actual simulation and the way that the water looks. Uh, if you want it to be a little bit uh, more detailed, just bring down the voxel size for a bit and it'll get rid of like these sharp edges and it'll give us a better kind of water look over there. You can also add a bunch of other um, filters over here to kind of uh, get the look that you're wanting. But yeah, I'd recommend just kind of playing with it 
depending on the way that you wanted it. But uh, to get to the render that I had in the beginning of this video, uh, I only used the median and the offset. But if you want it to be like a little bit smoother, I'd add like a Gaussian. It's kind of like, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it's like a Gaussian blur, so it kind of blurs out everything. I could be mistaken with that, but at least that's how I understood it. Awesome. So let me show you how I did the lighting. So here is my original scene. Let me just go a little bit further in the timeline. Cool. So I did the lighting in two different ways. I found that actually that I got the best result just by using an HDRI. Uh, I think I got the HDRI off of, um, I think it's HDRI Haven. And all it is, is this rural landscape. Uh, option you can get it for free uh, just go on to uh, HDRI Haven and yeah just by using an HDRI I was able to actually get like a, a really nice realistic look I also did add a few lights over here to kind of emphasize certain things uh, when this decides to load there we go I kind of wanted this to shine a little bit more and I have a tube that goes through here that's just the lights uh, to kind of light up these areas up here because they were quite dark so it just added a little bit more dynamic lighting over there. With regards to the texture, um, I included two options. One is this kind of like orangey look, uh, and then I have two different cameras with two different settings. Uh, this kind of looks like beer. Uh, that was the original test because uh, the reference that I was using was kind of, I think it was for a beer ad. Pretty sure it was a Heineken. It was something else, I can't really remember. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, but yeah, I thought this looked very really nice, but I really liked this kind of dynamic blue look over here with this one. And it's a pretty simple texture, it's just a specular material, and the main thing that's happening is I just have a random walk over here, sorry, a volume medium over here, and it just has this kind of slight off blue color, which is giving us this nice blue over here, and then just a black in the scattering. Uh, this isn't necessary, I just have a noise over here that's um, going into the bump over here. Depending on the look that you're going for, I mean, this is a lot more water-like, but I kind of like this weird uh, bumpiness that it gets with the noise over here. And then with our orange texture, it's pretty much the same thing. It's literally just an absorption with a color over here. And to get the color of the orange, you just go over here into the transmission, and it's this kind of off orange, off yellow color, but yeah, I thought it looked quite nice. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, pretty cool effects. Uh, I would recommend playing around with the settings. Uh, I had quite a few variations before I ended up with my final result. I was quite happy with the final result, but you never know, you could get some better results just by messing around with different options. I'd also recommend maybe playing around with the fluid effects over here, adding a fluid PVD. You can get different results with the way that the water interacts with each other. Uh, and also maybe just messing around with the accuracy over here, uh, depending on the look that you're going for. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to add is that the way that the water comes in is like fast at first and then it slows down. That's a really simple, just speed ramp. Once the particles are cached over here, go into the playback and we're gonna be using frame over here. So what we can do is we can select the frame that we wanna start with. So I think you'll see over here, I start with frame 95. It goes fast up until uh, frame 30. It only increases by 15. I, I just noticed that the particles were moving a little bit too fast for my liking, but because we're using particles, we're able to time remap this by quite a lot. It goes to 110 and then I think all the way over here, it only moves three frames, but it moves fast enough that we're able to get this kind of fast and then super slow motion speed ramp. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as per usual, the project files of this will be in my Patreon. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to support the channel. But if not, a like and a subscribe does go a long way. But yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Peace.